You were going to say something? <coughs> I believe that um, there's always something called uh, collaboration, alliances. There are alliances that you can form if you're not merging to say, as far as Lagos is concerned, so, 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 and so parties are coming together to field one single candidate and we're pulling resources together to ensure that this candidate suffers. And that can happen. That is, that, that's going to happen at the presidency. It's going to happen at some critical states as well. Yeah. So it's, one party cannot just rise up and say, we want to do this. They need to collaborate and bring forces together to be able to do this. And I believe if that happens, you know, we may have a chance yeah. of having an alternative party taking over Lagos. I want to go back now to the APC because you said you were part of the consultancy that uh, put the APC together. And we did hear the state governor there talk about the fact that even, it, there's even no proper means of identification yeah. for delegates. Um, for a party that touts itself, you know, with internal democracy and has done so for years now, um, how worried should Nigerians be? And I don't know even if the PDP, the PDP has been around for longer, so I don't know, they probably do have a better structure, I don't know. But I'm just saying, how worried should we be about the parties themselves and how they work? The internal uh, democracy of every party, you know, is very important and it's very critical. And the currency of democracy or within a democracy in this age is actually trust. How can we begin to trust a party that doesn't have database or records? How can we begin to believe the figures they are taunting around and throwing around when they don't actually have records? That people who have tested the, the platform, who have applied to, for membership on that platform for the past three, four years, they've not gotten any feedback, not to talk of getting a slip to even allow them to vote. In other words, a list is going to be generated through some party leaders. Names are going to come up, you know, and, you know, it's going to be shrouded in secrecy. So at the end of the day, whatever you see is what you believe. So there is no fight. There is no transparency. There is no accountability. And there is no means of verifying who is who. So whosoever they come out to announce that has won is who is going to win. And I'm speaking from experience. The party, the first election, internal uh, democracy election that was held in APC when they are looking for the, when they are trying to bring in a chairman for the party, it was rigged. And it was rigged before, uh, you know, before the entire Nigerians. And Wait, which election was that? That was the one in Edo State between Oyegu and Chief Tommy Kimi, which Chief Tommy Kimi had to slip, step down, you know, you know, for... How uh, do we know it was rigged? You know, <laughs> I was there. <laughs> I was there and okay. I was aware. <laughs> so it was rigged. Really, so this is, these, are the, these are the kind of, you know, things that we're talking about. And that one wasn't really a direct primary. It was more or less the, you know, delegations and what have you. So with what we have today, everybody doesn't have control. And that's one of the reasons why we are seeing these tantrums. You know, if he had control, he's not going to have a, a press conference of anything. You already know what's going to happen. So it's like you're being beaten at your game, a game you are used yeah. to. He, he, he started his press conference talking about security and violence tomorrow, and he, uh, that he has heard that the touts have been mobilized. You know, Nigeria is already like you, like he even rightly <laughs> yeah. said, tense as it is politically. And then we hear this now. I don't know. Do we have the capacity now to control this sort of a conversation and if it actually happens tomorrow? I think what he wanted to do um, was show the world that he's in charge of Lagos, whether whatever happens tomorrow. So that, that's why he started off sounding very, very tough. And um, it's interesting that he speaks about thugs because only yesterday we heard accusations that, I mean, unfounded, that the thugs were, uh, I mean, owed allegiance to him, that they came, that he mobilized the thugs. So I, I think what's so happening here, blade. yeah, so what's happening here is that, okay, since he has been accused of bringing in talks, he, he's just trying to deflate, the, I mean, deflect the blame, uh, saying that I'm not the one who brought the talks, and if there are any talks, the one that I'm in charge, I'm in control, I'm the number one citizen of this state. I think that's what he was trying yeah. to do. It, it was all politics for me. Yeah. Yeah. You, have, you have led, led the NSARS uh, movement for quite a while now. Thank you very much for that, but a lot of people are very grateful uh, because, I mean, it has yielded some results at least. Um, so you're quite versed with security and the Nigerian police and how it works, you know. For a, a primaries like this tomorrow, which for the first time in Lagos' history is going to be this tense, usually the primaries are very, there's usually just one candidate yeah. who's endorsed by everybody. Tomorrow looks like it's going to be a little different. How worried should we be? And do you think the police have the capacity to, you know, just sort of hold people? Well, I think the police will do their best to ensure that they make Nigeria proud, to make a believer in the system, because reform is currently going on, and training is already going on within the police system, especially in, Niger in Lagos State as a well. So the, I, uh, the commissioner of police in Lagos State will ensure that he doesn't disappoint uh, the president you know, with the structure of the police. But again, um, somebody may not have control over the police. You know, you know we've heard political uh, politicians and governors tell you, 
we don't have control over the police. But during elections, the police uh, commissioner and the rest of them, they listen to whatever it is that they want, you know, unless they don't have the federal backing, as the case may be. So from what we're seeing now, Nigerians shouldn't be worried because they are not going to be attacking every normal Nigerian. So just, it's you a public know, holiday anyway. It's a so. public holiday. <laughs> we're just going to watch on TV and enjoy and ourselves party, and yeah. see how the party, party comports themselves. All right, we're going to take a quick break now. When we come back, we'll try and look at the Oshun elections. Very interesting it was this past week. And the outcome actually surprised a lot of people. Please don't go away. All right, welcome back. Now, um, last week, uh, last weekend, actually, the Ocean State elections held, but they were uh, inconclusive a uh, week today, which was last Sunday, uh, as declared by the uh, returning officer. And, of course, a rerun was held on Thursday. As at Sunday, um, the PDP was leading by a couple hundred votes. By Thursday, when the elections were concluded, the APC won by a couple hundred votes. And um, there were so many allegations thrown on social media and, of course, on in. on um, on media generally about you know what happened and what might have happened. Um, so I want to come to you, Jude. Now, the result came as a surprise to a lot of people because, yes. uh, especially some numbers in a few of the polling booths seemed a little interesting. Let me use the word. What were your thoughts about the elections? I, I think for me, the takeaway from the election is that um, vote buying is still a thing, um, and that if anybody is going to give the APC a run for its money. Uh, nationally, it, it, it's still the PDP. Yeah, but both, both were even accused of vote buying. Yeah, both, both were accused of vote buying. And then there were reported cases of violence, especially in the rural local government area. You know, so we, we, as much as I want to say we're making progress democratically, all of these things also make you want to think that yeah. we are taking maybe two steps forward and three backwards yeah. every time. And uh, for, for me, the, the biggest takeaway from the election is that um, the people sometimes are not even are not even assured of whether their votes will count because mm -hmm. when you have a situation where it took INEC um, hours to count uh, three thousand votes, <laughs> I mean they, they announced the results at two a.m. What are you counting? <laughs> you know, so it, it's just it looked it it, it looked manipulated yeah. from the way. Uh, Anek was making it look, and you can't blame people who well, say it was manipulated. Yeah, the good thing is that the courts are open to whoever <laughs> feels mm -hmm. aggrieved. But I, I was saying here last week on the show that it looks like we've moved from blatant rigging and violence now to the vote buying, where elections seemingly are peaceful and fair, but the underlying you know, situation is some intimidation and inducement now. Um, looking at the Osho State elections now, 2019 coming up next year, what are you thinking will happen very quickly? Well, I, I think that we need to look back at the components of the independence or erstwhile independent National Electoral Commission. We need to look at the constitution of that. We need to begin to rework a lot of things because as currently constituted, they are not ready for 2019. Because what happened in Oshun, you know, is a clear indicator, you know, it's an ominous indicator of the evils of 2019 and it must be curbed before then. You know, so those are the things we need to look at. Osho is not a representation of democracy in I mean, any... I'm in Akiti as well. So back-to-back -back elections yes. will have and the same sort of like that. So it, it seems it seem as if there is this deliberate attempt to divorce us from the womb of democracy, you know, systemically, you know, through rigging, through, you know, vote writing, through what have you. And the, the, it shows that impunity is actually... What's INEX, what's INEX power? Sorry to cut you in there. Yeah. What can INEX do in a situation like that? Where is it? Is it INX power to to stop vote buying? Is it the security operatives? Who's who's? What's gonna? What should be done there? If INEC is transparent enough, they could release a statement and say this and this and this were the issues that we've seen, and we cannot endorse this. And then the, the INEC chairman can opt to resign. So these are things, same people, the insane crimes that people do. If you have an election like this, and every single observer gave. You know, their word about it that it is, it is not a democracy or it is not free and fair and it is full of voter intimidation or what have you. What exactly are you sharing? What exactly are you announcing? What exactly, exactly are you endorsing? So they have implicated themselves. Thank you very much, Jude. Thank you very much, Shego. Um, very interesting day it has been. Yeah. Looking forward to tomorrow, wherever you are. It's a public holiday. Happy birthday, Nigeria. We're 58. Quite an adult <laughs> we are. <laughs> 
but most importantly for those people in Lagos, we're going to be staying glued to our television screens, of course, watching the All Progressive Congress as they try to get their candidates for the 2019 elections. Good luck to all the candidates. Um, if you missed it, uh, the Lagos State Governor did hold a press conference earlier on and he spoke about the fact that he's still in the race and will be doing everything in his power to make sure that everything tomorrow is safe. Thanks for joining us, and I'll see you next Sunday. Hey, 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 hey.